My name is Dr. John Jazuri, known as Dr. J to my patients. Uh, I'm a dentist in San Clemente, California, and today I will be discussing the topic of dental implants. First, I will explain to you what a dental implant is. Then I will go over some of the applications for using dental implants. Afterwards, I will discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of placing dental implants in your mouth. I will discuss the typical cost of having dental implants, as well as insurance coverage for dental implant treatment. And by the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of what dental implants are. Now, if you'd like to go to a specific part of this video, please check out the description below, where I've also placed a link to other useful topics, as well as the soft topics in this video, to help you understand more about dental implants. Feel free to ask me any questions, leave them in the comments, I'll be glad to get back to you. Now, before I start my third discussion of dental implants, I'd like to bring your attention to the website even28.com. That's E-V-E-N, the number two, the number eight.com, like the 28 teeth in your mouth. Even 28 is a dentist search engine. You can search by zip code or city to find a great dentist next to you. You can browse through the profiles of each dentist to learn more about them, including their list of services, their office hours, their top reviews, etc., etc. And when you find the right dentist, you can conveniently schedule your appointment online all from the website even28.com without paying a dime. And if you are a dentist, be sure to check out the website right now, submit your application online so you can create or claim your complimentary profile and have a presence on the dentist search engine even28.com. Okay, so what is a dental implant? Simply put, a dental implant is a replacement to your tooth that's 100% fake. So let me see if I can illustrate this on my models and my photos. This is what a natural tube looks like. An implant has a post that replaces the root, an abutment that creates kind of an intermediate, and a crown that replaces the upper portion, the kernel portion of the tooth. So when you're talking about a dental implant, the tooth is 100% fake. There's no roots left, there's no nerves left, there's no enamel dent, and nothing. The tooth is completely removed and it's replaced. When you talk about fillings, crowns, root canals, and pretty much any other dental procedure, there's still a portion of your tooth that's left in your mouth. So when the dentist does the filling, they remove, you know, this part of the tooth and fill it, you still have all of the tooth structure left. When they do a crown, they remove the upper portion of the tooth and you have everything else left. Even when you do a root canal, the root canal just removes the pulp, the nerves here. You still have the tooth root and the crown. So what happens is you can still get infected, you can still have complications, the tooth can still break, etc. Et when you get the implant, the tooth is removed. And for a lot of people who've been having problems with tooth and spending good money after bad money trying to save these teeth, it's a losing battle. So for those people, getting rid of the tooth and replacing with an implant is a blessing. Now, an implant consists of three parts. One is the post which is the screw that's placed in the jaw. We call it post, so it's not as scary, but it's literally a screw that's drilled into the jaw. Then on top of that goes the abutment, which is the intermediate, and then the crown sits on top of that. Let me show this to you on a model so you can see it out one more time. All right, so that's the screw, which is inside the jaw, which is blue. The part that's sticking above it is the abutment. And then the crown basically sits as such. Now that's the part you care about. That's what people see when they look in the mouth. But no one's gonna know that that's an implant and that's a natural tooth next to it, if your dentist does a good enough job. So implants are a way to replace your missing teeth with something that's 100% artificial, which is great, because now you don't have to worry about cavities, you don't have to worry about infections. It's just a fake tooth that if it's done properly, will yes you a lot of gum. Now, that doesn't mean you can't clean implants. You still have to brush them, floss them, everything else you do with your natural teeth but you don't have to worry about cavities under implants. So um, a fake tooth is the way to go if your tooth has poor prognosis, you know, because really doing a root canal, cutting the tooth in half, doing a crown lengthening on a tooth that doesn't have enough support, you're gonna come back for an implant two years, three years, five years later. So when you reach the point where it doesn't seem like it's worth saving the tooth, the dental implant is the best way to go. Okay, let's talk about the applications of dental implants. Now, most people assume dental implant is an option to replace a missing tooth, and that is correct, but you can do more than just replace one missing tooth with an implant. So yeah, you can replace a missing tooth with an implant. You can replace multiple missing teeth with implants. This right here is an implant bridge where you can see two implants and a three unit bridge on top of it. So you can replace multiple teeth and you don't need as many implant screws as missing teeth. So as you saw from that example, you have three teeth missing, 
but only two implants can support a three unit bridge. So you can replace one tooth, two teeth, three teeth, and you can replace all of your teeth. Yes, so if you have all of your teeth missing, completely toothless, you can replace that with implants. Now, there's two options and two routes to go that. One is the fixed permanent options where the teeth stay in your mouth. That's called either all on four teeth or full mouth implants, which you can learn more about in my other videos. Or you can support your dentures with implants. And I have a model to exhibit how that works. This would be a model. So we place two implants on this model and the denture has this kind of a housing. It's like a lock and key model and the implant can support the denture to kind of stabilize it. Uh, this is referred to as snap-on dentures, implant supported dentures or over dentures. There's a couple different terms for it, but either way, they're basically a combination of dentures and implant. Now this is still dentures. So you still come in and out and you know, they are dentures, but they're much better fitting dentures. So implants can be used to replace one tooth, multiple teeth, all of your teeth, or they can be used to support your dentures. It all depends on what your needs are, what your budget is, of course, and how much jawbone you have. And you have to go get a couple opinions based on different dentists to see which option is best. But implants are a very versatile tool and they can help us do so much that we couldn't do before implants. Because before implants, if somebody had a loose denture, we would just have to redo it. But what happens when you have no more jawbone left? There's not much you can do. A new perfect denture would still be loose. Now we just put in two implants, lock them in, good to go. Or four implants if it's a looser case. Uh, same thing for people who want to have permanent teeth and they have the time and the budget to do it. Before implants, there was no option. You'd have to just leave, uh, live with your bad teeth. Now we can just take out all their teeth, put in, you know, eight to 12 implants and do an all on four treatment or a full mouth implant to replace all of your teeth with beautiful permanent teeth that stay in your mouth, that chew and function like natural teeth. And you basically can look like a movie star. Um, so implants are just fantastic in that aspect and they have plenty of uses in dentistry and I couldn't see myself working for even one day without using implants in one way or another to help my patients improve their oral health. Okay, let's go over the advantages and disadvantages of dental implants. So my favorite advantage of a dental implant is it's just the best product. If you're trying to replace a missing tooth, you basically have a three option. One is a denture, which comes in and out. One is a bridge which involves shaving the adjacent teeth. And the last one is a dental implant, which is a completely fake tooth. Um, a dental implant is the best option. It doesn't involve shaving the adjacent teeth like the bridge does. And it's not an object that comes in and out. It stays in your mouth permanently as opposed to dentures. You have 100% chewing efficiency with a dental implant and it, it's just the best product. So if you're looking for the best, dental implant is what you wanna go for. Now. The cost is obviously a little bit less. It takes a longer time to perform dental implants as opposed to other treatments. But you learn chance. This is your mouth. You know, I've had patients that started with um, getting a denture or a bridge because they lost one or two teeth as a kid. And next thing you know, by the time they're in their 40s, they've lost multiple teeth. Some of them even all of their teeth. All because they didn't start with treating the one first bad tooth that they had. So it is expensive. It does take longer. But if you're looking for the best, a dental implant is what you want to go with. And it is always worth the extra time and the extra money to get the best product, especially when you're talking about something that involves your health and your mouth, and that's just it, the best product. Okay, so that is one of the advantages of the dental implant. You get a fake tooth that resembles your natural tooth, 100% chewing efficiency, and looks perfectly like a natural tooth. Uh, there are a lot of other benefits of a dental implant, which I'm gonna review, uh, just a few of them, the most important ones. To me, the next, and the, probably even the mo <laughs> most, beneficial aspect of a dental implant is bone perception. So here's what happens. When you have implants in your jaw, you place this screw into the jawbone, okay? So imagine your jawbone is here, you place these screws in it. If you don't place anything and you just lose your tooth over time, even if you get the bone graft, your bone continues to shrink. People who lose teeth have their bone shrink at an accelerated rate of three times more than average. So you lose a bunch of teeth, your jaw starts shrinking, which explains why grandpa and grandma have very small jaws if they're wearing dentures. Um, after decades of not having teeth, your jaw shrinks. This can cause difficulty to chew food, even difficulty to wear dentures. Dentures start getting loose. Your jaw can fracture. So it causes a lot of problems. But when you place implant, the body is tricked because the body cannot distinguish between the implant posts versus the natural tooth root, okay? So when you place those things into the jawbone, the jawbone preserves the jaw and it doesn't shrink. And that makes a big difference over the decades because now you have a lot of jawbone versus a shrunken jawbone. 
and it's just a better result. You know, as you get older, your jaw is stronger, you can chew food better, and all these little things add up. So when you get an implant, you preserve your jawbone. One of the biggest advantages of a dental implant, which to the patient is not even a big deal, but to me, love it. Another advantage of a dental implant is it prevents your teeth from shifting. So when you have a gap tooth, no matter where it is, even if it's in the back or, or the front or anywhere in between, when you lose teeth, your teeth start shifting. So imagine these are your three upper teeth, your three lower teeth, and you lose this tooth. Uh, what happens is the upper tooth starts to move down and these two teeth start to shift inward. So losing one tooth can actually mess up your whole bite a few years down the line because your teeth start shifting and getting crooked and you start developing gaps, which can trap food which can cause other cavities and gum disease and other issues. So I've seen people mess up their whole mouth because they lost one tooth, especially when you're younger, because your teeth are more likely to shift and move when there's a gap, right? That's what orthodontists do. They create gaps and they move teeth. Well, losing teeth has the same effect. So when you lose teeth, if you're not putting somewhere there, something to replace it, that can cause a problem. And implants address that issue, because once you place the implant, this space is preserved, your teeth won't shift, and you're good to go. Okay, so those are the couple of the advantages of implants. I can keep going on and on, but those are the main advantages of a dental implant. Let's talk about some of the disadvantages. The obvious one is the cost. Yes, implants cost a lot more. They cost more than dentures, they cost more than bridges, and they that's just how it is. But as you already know, best things in life cost more money. And this isn't like a shoe that you buy and you throw away after a couple of months. This stays in your mouth for a lifetime. So is it worth the investment? Absolutely. Now, if you're not happy with your dentist or if your fee is extremely high, you want to talk about financing options or finding another dentist, that's fine. But if you feel that implant is the best option for your mouth, go with it because you really regret going with lesser expensive options as you get older and now you have to replace and put additional implant because you're going to start with putting that one implant in the first place. So cost is the first disadvantage. The other one is time. When we're talking about fillings, crowns, and Root canals, you're talking about one appointment, one week, two weeks, maybe a month here or there. When you talk about dental implants, we're talking about months or years. Okay, I've had dental treatment cases that have taken two years to do the full math. I've had one cosmetic implant case that's had infection that's taken me a year to finish or year and a half. So when you're talking about implants, it just takes a long time. And the reason for that is when you put the screw in here, the jawbone has to integrate around the screw and heal around it. That takes time. And then you have to put the crown on it. If you have a cosmetic case, the gum tissue has to heal. That takes time. So when you add those times, the typical implant case takes anywhere from three to nine months. Now that's the average case. A quick case can be done in one day and a complicated case can take years. Now, if you're going to a dental school setting, always takes a few years. So uh, prepare to spend a lot of time. But again, you're taking the best care of your mouth and time or money should not be an issue if you are getting the best product for your mouth. The last disadvantage of a dental implant is the trick to finding a good dentist. So here's what happens. If you need a teeth clean, you just walk into a dental office, you'll get a cleaning that's One dentist might give you a clean that's a little better. The other one may give you one that's a little bit worse, but you're gonna get your cleaning no matter what. Same goes with a filling and basic stuff, night cards and stuff like that. When you talk about a dental implant, unfortunately, a lot of dentists are still not doing dental implants. So dentists who don't do dental implants, one, they're gonna try to get you to do a different treatment, okay? Which I don't like, because. If you do implants and if your fees are fair and it's better for the patient, then that's what you should try to get the patient to do. If it's a little bit harder financially, it doesn't matter. If your insurance doesn't cover it, you know, the insurance shouldn't dictate how you take care of your body because, you know, insurance once was cheapest, which is usually not the best for your mouth. So finding a good dentist can get tricky because if your dentist doesn't do implants, then, you, you know, you might have to go look for another dentist. Or if they do implants but their fees are exuberant, then you might have to go for somebody who has more reasonable fees. At the end of the day, this is your mouth. So if you have to do a little research, do it. I mean, if you're looking for a car, you don't walk to the first dealer and buy the first car you see. You do some research on the internet, you go talk to a couple of dealers, and then you find a car that's right for your needs. Well, we're talking about something that's gonna last a lifetime, not five years or three years, whenever you'll be sent. So do your research, find a good dentist who does implants, and of course, if that dentist tells you, well, you know, implant is just not an option or it's too expensive or it's just not a right fit, I would do something else, go with that, okay? But don't make your decision because your dentist doesn't do implants or it's not comfortable or it doesn't feel like that's that most what the insurance pays for. Go with what's best for your mouth. So those are the disadvantages of implant, but again, as you notice, they're not really like a disadvantage when it comes to the treatment. They're just disadvantage in terms of the process of getting implants. At the end of the day, implant is the best product, and that's what you should go for if that's the best thing for your needs. 
Okay, let's talk about the cost of a dental implant. Uh, dental implants are expensive. They cost more than fillings, crowns, and root canals. And the reason for that is because of how much work it is and how many parts it involves. When you're talking about a dental implant, obviously one part of it is the screw, but you also have to pay for the abutment, which is the intermediate, and the crown. So there's three parts where you have to pay for the implant. And that's assuming that you don't need anything extra. If you need to have a tooth removed, well, obviously you have to pay for that. If you need to place a bone graft, you have to pay for that. You might need gum work, sinus lift. There's a whole bunch of extras that go into that. They could be upgrade parts and pieces as well. So these all add up. And I would say the average cost of an implant in the United States from A to Z is about three to $4,000 per tooth. Uh, now that's the average, you know, on the low end, it's about, I would say maybe $2,000. And on the high end, it would be about seven to ten thousand dollars. A lot of money, but that's what it takes. That's why you gotta brush your teeth to not get to the point where you need a dental implant. Um, that's as far as the cost of the implant in the United States. Now there is the thing called dental tourism, where some patients go abroad to get their work done. Um, Mexico, South America, Turkey, those are some of the more popular destinations. Over there, you can get implants for a fraction of the price. I've heard things from two to five hundred dollars per tooth, so it is a lot cheaper. But you got to make sure a this is something you can afford, and then b you got to consider the number of trips you have to make because a lot of times they do the work at an accelerated pace, but you're not going to finish all your work at the same time. You're probably going to leave with a temporary teeth, and you have to go and make multiple visits back and forth. So make sure this is something you can afford. Usually, for one implant, it's really not worth doing this, but if you need four, five, six implant then it starts to make sense to consider dental tourism. As far as dental insurance and cost of the implant goes, the dental insurance is pretty much useless. I do about 300 implants a year, maybe about five, six of them are actually covered by insurance and they still have co-pays. Um, the insurance usually promises that they will cover implants, but when it comes down to it, they usually find a way to reject it. So they say, we're not paying for an implant, we're paying for the dentures. We're not paying for an implant, we're paying for a bridge instead. And they basically, put the cost on you. So even if the clause says that it's a covered procedure, they'll come up with a way not to pay for it. A lot of them have a pre-exclusion clause, which means if your tooth was missing before you got the insurance, they're not gonna cover it. So they only cover the implant if you've had the insurance for at least a year and you lose the tooth in that process. And again, you have to use two years benefit to get it covered. So when you look at everything it takes to get the insurance to pay for it, you find out that it's pretty much better for you to just find a dentist that has a good price and go that route because dental insurance not very useful with dental implants. Okay, so it's time for me to share my thoughts, Dr. J's thoughts on dental implants. And here's what I feel like. If you're younger and your tooth starts to break and decay, uh, try to avoid dental implants. So if you're in your 20s and you have a broken tooth and your dentist suggests doing a root canal or a crown or whatnot, that's a good option. Try to go with those options. Again, every case is different than, you know, I mean, you can get implants at a 16 year old or a 60 year old, but when you're younger, try to preserve your teeth because you have a long ways to go. I mean, why not try to save your teeth and worry about dental implants in the future? So for younger patients, I tend to stay away from dental implants whenever I can. If I can fix their tooth with a crown, I go that route. If I can do a root canal, I go that route. Now that all changes as time goes by. So when somebody comes to me in their 60s and the tooth is broken, I'm gonna be a lot more geared towards placing a dental implant as opposed to saving the tooth. And the reason for that is obvious. I mean, you've had that tooth in your mouth for five decades. What are the chances of it lasting the rest of your life? If, especially a tooth that's been worked on. Don't forget, every time a tooth is worked on, you have less and less tooth structure. So a tooth that has already had a root canal and a crown and now it's failing and breaking, you're losing it. Um, you're not gonna win that battle and save that tooth. So you wanna make a decision obviously on a case by case basis, but I like to do implants more on my senior patients and I try to prefer crowns and root canals and restoring teeth on younger folks. And again, this is all case by case. It just depends on how bad the tooth is broken. That's another scenario. If your tooth has a very poor prognosis, if you're seeing a dentist and they're like, no, the chances of salvaging this tooth is only 40%, 50%, and you still have to do root canal. Those aren't very promising numbers. At that point, I would just take my money and go do the implant, and that would be the better option. So if the tooth has poor prognosis, again, that's another case where I gear towards the implant. If I feel very comfortable that I can save the tooth and the root canal has a 90% prognosis, the crown has a very good chance of lasting five plus years, I would go with those options. But when I reach the point where I'm starting to scratch my head, will this work or will this not work? 
I don't feel comfortable having the patient do a bunch of stuff when the prognosis is low. Obviously, I'll present that option to them. Sometimes the patient says, okay, we'll have insurance, let's try this, let's try that. But that only works if the tooth has a good chance of being safe. A lot of times the tooth has very poor prognosis, and in those cases, implant is a better route to go. So there are a lot of cases that I prefer implants, and there are cases where I try to save the tooth. You have to basically um, talk to your dentist, evaluate the situation, look at everything. And you know, it's not just about your age and the condition of the tooth. There's other things that come into factor. If you have a lot of teeth missing, is an implant worth it? Usually if you have seven, eight teeth missing and you want to do one implant, it's not a good option because you're going to overstress that implant. You might be better off doing dentures now until you can afford multiple implants. So you have to take everything into consideration before making a decision of going with an implant or with alternative options. And again, like I said, there's alternative options. You can do a bridge, you can do a denture, you can do fillings and root canals and crowns a lot of time. But, you know, if it's not gonna work, go with the implant right away. Don't waste your time and money doing something that has really poor prognosis. And it's better to just invest the extra time and money, skip to the last step. So as a dentist who gets experience over time, you start to realize cases that are worth trying to save and cases that are just a losing battle. And that's those are the cases that you wanna go with the implant. So that's my final thoughts on implant. Implants are fantastic. They're definitely worth the time and the money. And if you need them, it actually, when you consider the cost and the time of doing the wrong treatment before the right treatment, it makes sense to just skip and go to the implant. So be sure to talk to your dentist. Don't just take my word. It's a case by case situation, but take everything into consideration before you start to go with implants. But if you go with implants, I can guarantee you, if you have a good dentist, you're going to be very happy with the results and it's worth the time and money invested. I'm Dr. Jazeri. I hope you enjoyed my video and check out my other video series to learn more about teeth, gums, and other dental related topics.